In the last lecture, we learned about internationalization API and how to use it to format date and time to a given locale. Now, this internationalization API can also be used to format numbers to a given locale. So in this lecture, let's learn about formatting numbers using internationalization API. And in order to do that, let's first go ahead and create a number. Okay, so this is the number and I have stored it in this num variable. Let's also go ahead and log it in the console. If I save the changes, you can see that the number has been logged. Now, we want to format this number to a given locale. So let's say we want to format this number to English US. Okay, so for that, on this INTL API, just like date time format method, we have another method called number format. And to this number format also, we need to pass a locale. So here, let's pass en us. Okay, so this will create a formatter. And on that formatter, let's call format method. And to this format method, we can pass the number which we want to format. So here, we want to format the number stored in this num variable. So let's pass it to this format method. Now, this expression here will format this number and it will return the formatted number so let's store that returned formatted number in a variable let's call it num us and let's go ahead and let's log this num us in the console if i save the changes you will notice that this number has been formatted here and here this comma has been used as a separator okay now, let's try to format this same number to a different locale. So, let's copy these two line of codes. And here, let's simply change the locale. So, now I want to format this number in German. So, for that, the locale will be DE hyphen DE. Okay. And let's call this variable num GE for German. And let's copy this. I mean, let's log this. If I save the changes. You can see that again this number has been formatted and this time for the divider you can see that dot has been used and for the decimal part a comma has been used and when we pass locale as english us in that case for the decimal part dot has been used and for the separator comma has been used okay so you can see how these two numbers are formatted differently based on the locale let's also format this number in arabic as it is spoken in Syria. So again, I will copy these two lines. I'll paste it here and I'll simply change the locale to Arabic as it is spoken in Syria. So AR hyphen SY. All right. And let's call this variable num SY and also also let's log it. If I save the changes now, this number has been formatted in Arabic and you can see uh, in this case also, when we are passing the locale as Arabic as it is spoken in Syria, the separator which is used is comma here. Okay, so this is how you can format a number to a given locale using number format method of INTL API. Now, just like date time format method, this number format method also takes an optional second argument. And that second argument is an object. So let's go ahead and let's create an object. Let's call it options. Okay. And to this object, let's specify some properties. So the first property which I'm going to specify is style. And the style here is going to be unit. And when we specify a style as unit, we also need to have another property which is called unit. And here we need to specify the unit in which we want to you know, uh, display the number. So here, let's say mile per hour. Okay. And let's go ahead. Let's pass these options. I mean, this option to these number format methods. And let's see how these units are displayed in different locales. So if I save the changes, for the US, you can see it is MPH and in case of German, it is 
mile slash hour so mile per hour okay so based on the locale the units are displayed differently now the value of this style property can also be percentage and currency okay so let's use percentage here and when we use style as percentage in that case the unit will be ignored and this should be percent and not percentage okay let's save the changes and now you can see uh, after these numbers we have a percent you know this percent sign so in us between the number and percent there is no space but when we are you know uh, logging it in german in that case when we are formatting it in german in that case there is also a space between number and this percentage sign and this style can also be currency so it can be unit percent and currency so let's now use currency and again when we use currency in that case also this unit will be ignored and when we specify the style as currency then we also need to have a currency property and here we can specify the currency so here let's say maybe usd okay let's save the changes and now you can see when we are formatting it in english us then we have this dollar sign before the number and when we are displaying it in uh, german we have this dollar sign after the number and there is also a space between that okay and in case of arabic as it is spoken in syria you can see we have us and then this dollar symbol let's change it to euro if i save the changes now these numbers are displayed in euros okay now let's see what will happen if we don't specify this currency property so let me go ahead and comment this here let's save the changes and you can see we have an error so currency code is required with currency style so if you specify the style as currency then you need to have a currency property okay and in the same way if you specify the style as unit then you need to have a unit property now if i save the changes the error should be gone also remember that this currency you know the value of this currency property cannot be extracted from user's browser so you cannot have the value of the currency based on user's locale okay so you need to specify the value for this currency property explicitly and that will be used in the formatted number like we are doing here okay so basically based on the locale which we have specified here for this number format method the currency property is not going to be set based on that locale we need to set it explicitly all right and the last property which i want to talk about is use grouping okay and the value of this use grouping property is either true or false so by default its value is set to true and when we use use grouping in that case the numbers are separated by using a separator for example here you can see these numbers are separated using comma when we are using this locale english us and the numbers here are separated using dots when you when we are using this locale okay so by default its value is true but if i go ahead and set it to false then no separator will be used if i save the changes you can see that now no separator has been used to format these numbers and if i set it back to true in that case a separator based on the locale will be used in the number okay so these are the four main properties which you can specify in this options object all right so this is all from this lecture if you have any question related to internationalization api and how to use it to format date time and numbers then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day